The Perseus-class gunship is an upcoming subcapital ship in Star Citizen, a beefy combat platform. The concept is pretty neat. Take a multi-crew ship, strap some armour to it and then bolt on a couple of big gun turrets for good measure. What you're left with is something that in theory should be a big threat to medium to large ships and even something for capital ships to take notice of. I'm Farrister and welcome to the Dry Dock a new series which will delve deeper into the ships of Star Citizen. This video will explore the background behind the Perseus both in and out of game, then take a look at some of the attributes and statistics of the ship before considering how that might all translate into gameplay. There are timestamps in the video description, although if you're a fan of the Perseus you might prefer to watch this one all the way through. And whilst this channel usually focuses on what's currently in game, Necessarily, this video will navigate the treacherous space that is speculation territory. Whilst every effort has been made to approach this video accurately, sometimes information is sparse and much is subject to change as time goes along, so please treat the content with a pinch of salt and not as a definitive promise as to what will happen. All of that said, let's dive into the background of the Perseus. The Perseus was first unveiled at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo in November 2020, to sit in the 100m ship range but contrasting to the Hammerhead and Polaris by providing firepower in the form of large calibre gun turrets. The Perseus is designed and manufactured by Robert Space Industries so that RSI triangular style is highly visible. There's been very little information following the initial flurry of information so it remains to be seen how long the ship will remain in development, although it seems that the Polaris may well be a precursor in the development timeline. In game lore, the Perseus is a complete, modern refresh of an old design. The original Perseus gunship was first developed in 2528, making it well over 400 years old at this point. The old design was immediately thrown into frontline use, for example at the incident at Red Ridge in 2529 and across the Perry Line after first contact with the Xi'an in 2530. Production of that Perseus finished in 2863 but remained in service with the UEE Navy. During Operation Mandrake at the Battle of Oberon, Admiral Bishop is said to have personally witnessed an aging Perseus holding its own against the Vandal forces resulting in a request to modernise the Perseus with a view to putting it back into production again. This redesigned version arrived in 2950, including for civilian use through the Militia Mobilisation Initiative. In what has quickly become a mainstay for this section of these videos, Paul over at the Astro Historian has a fantastic lore video available for those who are interested in finding out more about the art of war and specifically the history of the Perseus class. On launch in 2020, the Perseus was offered for sale for $675 or $600 of new money and this price has persisted since. The Perseus has only subsequently been offered for sale to coincide with specific events. The stated purpose for the Perseus is as a gunship, supposedly relatively well armoured and defended and equipped with weaponry to deal with medium to large sized targets. The design inspiration seems to have been to consider the old, ironclad ships that bridge the gap between the Age of Sail and the birth of the battleship slash dreadnought. The RSI website does list the Perseus as a frigate, although that seems a little misleading. It seems more likely that the Perseus will arrive almost as a sister ship to the Hammerhead and at a similar size too. Whereas the Hammerhead is supposed to excel at destroying smaller fighters, the Perseus would be bigger firepower for bigger targets, including hammerhead sized enemies. Accordingly, the primary design purpose seems to be as a screen to aid in fleet defence. Based on current information, the Perseus would have a total length of around 100 metres, a total width or beam of around 50 metres and a total height or depth of 21 metres. Given these sizes are very neatly rounded, it's quite possible that the dimensions are going to change a little. 
For context, a hammerhead is about 120 metres long, so that sort of size seems to be where the Perseus is likely to end up. The mass of the Perseus is yet to be determined. By way of components, the Perseus is expected to house a medium radar, as well as two medium sized computers. Power is expected to be provided by two large power plants, with cooling provided by two large coolers. Defensively, the Perseus would carry two large shield generators, and all of those components would be on a par with a hammerhead. The Perseus specifications list two fuel intakes with size yet to be determined, two large hydrogen fuel tanks, and a large quantum fuel tank. Both the quantum drive and jump drive are also set to be large size. In terms of propulsion, the technical overview lists two main thrusters and two VTOL thrusters, with 12 fixed manoeuvring thrusters located around the ship, providing rotation and translation support. The primary armament of the Perseus is set to be two size 7 manned turrets, each armed with two size 7 weapons. That's four size 7 weapons, equivalent to the firepower of four Ares starfighters, all focused on a target. The weapons seem to be optimised against similar size targets to the Perseus, meaning that medium to large ships that are unable to dodge that fire might need to be worried. The Perseus is also set to carry two remote turrets armed with two size 3 weapons, defaulting to size 3 ballistic gatling guns, to deal with smaller targets. That said, the Q&A does note that whilst the two turrets help to defend the Perseus, it may be somewhat vulnerable to being swarmed by large numbers of fighters and bombers. The Perseus also carries two missile racks armed with size 5 torpedoes, which are the same size launched by the Gladiator. This seems to also be tailored towards engaging medium to large targets. The total payload across both racks is 20 missiles. The crew specifications for the Perseus note both a maximum and minimum crew of 6, although this might be one of those ships where the requirement is lower. To start with, the Q&A notes that the pilot controls the torpedo armament. The same Q&A also notes that the remote turrets come equipped with blades, so can be automated by default, which leaves two manned size 7 turrets, which do need to be manned, but potentially by NPC crew. So, between a pilot, two turret gunners, and maybe a support player for engineering repairs, the true crew requirement might end up being 3 or 4. The Perseus is not as large as some of the capital ships, and so the amenities are more befitting a ship at this size point. There's a habitation section with a mess hall, crew quarters, and a captain's quarters, as well as a docking collar on the lower deck. There's a cargo bay with 50 SCU of storage, as well as an elevator which can deploy to allow ground vehicles around the size of an Ursa rover to hop aboard, albeit at the cost of sacrificing some of that cargo storage. With relatively heavy turrets, and supposedly fairly chunky armour on the hull, the obvious use case for the Perseus is to specifically target medium to large sized ships. Caterpillars, Hercules, Hammerheads, all should take note of that big armament, the equivalent to four Ares in the size of the weaponry. That lends itself well to patrol use, floating around to deal with such targets, or potentially for nefarious characters, for use in piracy operations, although the 50 SCU cargo bay might be a limiting factor in that regard. Whilst the Perseus may well excel at taking on larger ships, it's noted in the Q&A that smaller fighters and bombers pose a greater challenge. The dual size 3 turrets are clearly a defensive factor against such a threat, but only insofar as they're able to get on target and stay on target. Given the slower speeds of the Perseus, that could create a threat of blind spots and the like. That might, however, make the Perseus a great partner for a hammerhead or a small fighter squadron, with the latter covering the threat of smaller ships, leaving the Perseus to clean house on the meatier targets. The Q&A also notes that the natural role for the Perseus sits in fleet defence, bolstering the firepower of a combat fleet whilst benefiting from the fleet amenities, such as medical facilities. 
The other obvious use case is for a small group of players who want to have a big impact. The relatively modest multi-crew requirement makes the Perseus a fairly big ship that could be crewed by a fairly small crew, so for combat enthusiasts that might be an interesting choice. And the fleet defence element is likely to be the natural fleet role for the Perseus. Remember, this is a ship that's much smaller than other capital ships, and without the full suite of services available aboard. The Perseus is built around dishing out damage and doing so against less manoeuvrable targets. For fleets where the Perseus is amongst the bigger craft, that will give it more of a tank-like role, soaking up some damage into shields and heavy armour to allow lighter combatants to operate. And for capital fleets, that leaves the Perseus in a position to use the relatively large cannons to blast away at enemy screens, or even potentially to harass some of the capital ships with the heavy weaponry aboard. To be clear, I don't expect a Perseus to be soloing a fully crewed capital ship, most of which are far too well armed and defended to lose out in such a scenario. But in a chaotic battle in which the Perseus is not the focus of enemy fire, the cannons may well be large enough to sneak some damage in below the radar, so to speak. Regardless, the Perseus could be a very interesting combat platform when it finally hits the verse, especially so because other than turret automation which might follow later, much of the combat functionality is already in existence at time of recording. But at the risk of going on for too long, we'll draw a line under the Perseus here. As this is still a new series for the channel, your thoughts on either the dry dock format or the Perseus will be very welcome in the comments section. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you might like to do that too so you can get the heads up for new videos on the channel, as well as firing Psi 7 cannons at the like button if you like heavily narrated slideshows talking about naval hardware. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.